What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're talking virtual pinball. So I said it in my past videos, I am gonna start doing my own virtual pinball cabinet. This is gonna be my own personal cabinet for my personal use. And basically I started purchasing the hardware needed, but the big thing was that I spent basically about a week just figuring out the wiring components for the solenoids and such. Um, so if you don't know about virtual pinball cabinets, it's a big deal to me at least because I think the technology and the idea of it is just insane. You basically got a TV screen set to landscape mode and it could play about four to 500 pinball tables and more. So I'm dying to do this project, but I didn't want to do a regular, just plain old virtual pinball cabinet with a screen. I wanted to do force feedback. So I'm talking solenoids, I'm gonna do the strobe lights, I'm gonna do the beacons, shaker motors, I'm planning to do a lot of that in this build. So when it comes to like virtual pinball, in all honesty, there's two main people that are at least explaining virtual pinball and how it works. You got Terry Red, Terry Red is the king. I want his pinball cabinet, you should definitely check his out. And then you do have also Mr. Frenchy. Mr. Frenchy is an awesome guy basically giving you very detailed in-depth ways of setting up stuff um maybe i'll do the same but i'm not going to call myself an expert but just following their guides and again it's, it's a lot of guides i mean you're talking like four to five hours worth of just videos watching um but following their guides i actually got a good start and a good understanding as far as the software needed and the hardware needed i'll flip the camera around because you guys don't like self-mobile basically i'm going to go into kind of the hardware that i currently have looking at the software and basically a plan uh, as far as on my end for this build. So a couple of factors when it comes into virtual pinball. First thing on my pinball cabinet, I'm gonna be doing three screens, utilizing actually three TVs. One TV is gonna be set for the play field. One TV will be the back glass and one TV will be a DMD. So with that, I will need a PC, uh, basically a very good graphics card. I'm looking at the RTX 2060 that will display three um, outputs, but the big thing is that I do want 4K. Um, so with that graphics card, I will be able to pull off 4K at least for the play field. So my pinball cabinet is gonna have three screens, and then the big thing that I wanted to do was the force feedback. That was a big deal. I wanted the real feel, basically when the flipper goes off, a solenoid will fire, it'll actually thump onto the piece of wood, and it'll basically make it feel like an actual real pinball cabinet. Now with this though, this is like the headache. People see this and then they kind of freak out, they call it a day. I'm not gonna say this is easy, but once you kind of get three of them wired, you'll basically understand the concept of the rest. Um, so basically on my cabinet, I'm gonna be doing solenoids. I do have 10 solenoids coming in. These are three, uh, but unfortunately I actually purchased the wrong ones. But the big thing about solenoids is that I did get it on eBay secondhand, so these are used because brand new, these solenoids are expensive. Uh, these specific ones, I spent five bucks a solenoid, but unfortunately I bought the wrong number. Um, so I'm not gonna say they're wasted, but I'll probably find someplace else in the cabinet to use them. Might be able to use like two of them for the slingshots, but I do have the correct ones. Um, basically, anybody that actually wants to know it, So I purchased these, it's the 3RH1140s, 2BB40. The real one that you do want is the 1BB40. I did notice that with this, there's no terminals, like there's no screw terminal to keep this wire in. So gravity right now is holding this wire in, unless I actually hard solder it. Um, maybe that's the difference, I don't know what it is, but at least it's a good way to get my feet wet on this. So I do have 10 of these. There's gonna be 10 in the cabinet, uh, apparently with, you know, force feedback 10 is the biggest that you could do and it's the most common, so I'm going all out. As far as other stuff, as far as toys, I'm gonna to be doing um, beacons, strobes and flashers, and also RGB lighting, and possibly the gear motors and the blower fan. But other than that, I'm not going all out with that. People put bells and chimes, I'm not in for that. I'd rather keep it visual for that. Um, the big thing as far as when you do start, as you can see right here, this centerpiece right here is the heart. This is the biggest thing that you do need. We do have three separate power supplies on this. I have a 24 volt, a 12 volt, and a five volt. The solenoids need 24 volts. That's on its own power supply. I forgot if I'm doing five volts for the LEDs or 12 volts, but basically everything 
needs a power supply and it also needs a certain voltage. So once people kind of see this, they kind of get scared. It's really not that bad. I'm not calling myself an expert, but just getting these three wired up, I feel totally comfortable with wiring up everything else. The only big thing is that you don't want to blow stuff. So you definitely don't want to connect, for example, a strobe light into a 24 volt if it can't handle 24 volts because it'll literally explode. But that you got to do at your own risk as far as electrical and all that. Um, basically, as far as controls, I do have an LED whiz. This has 32 ports. So essentially, I could control 32 toys. I believe the count on mine will be 16 to 18 toys. Um, so we have that. And I also have the 16 port Sane Smart. Everything as far as an on and off switch will go through the Sane Smart. Um, so I'm, I'm not gonna have more than 16 toys. That's how I figured it. And the cool thing with this, uh, the LED was that each port will be for RGB. So if I did, let's say two or three or four LED strips, I'm gonna need about six to 12 ports on this. So. The regular LED whiz, I'm very sure you could only do one LED whiz, you'll be set for the entire cabinet. I'm talking nerd talk, but I spent a lot of time, we got fuses in between the LED whiz and the same snart so that the LED whiz don't blow up in case I mess up something. As far as like test bench, this is perfect. I mean, I've been playing with it. Yes, I only have three solenoids out of 10, but so far the results on this are spectacular. I'm loving every second of it. Now again, for me, my virtual pinball cabinet will be based off of the Simpsons Pinball Party. Artwork and everything, I'm going to be doing it on that. As far as my monitors, I'm going to go with a 50-inch Playfield, 32-inch Backlass, and a 22-inch DMD. Um, I've seen people with uh, with um, I've seen people with pinball cabinets like you get from Gaming Solutions or like the VP forums. And I'm sorry, I'm not a fan of big back glasses with big black shadows like i can't stand it i want everything clean basically frameless i don't want to see any of you know the black panels and stuff so that again is all going to be custom made by me but as far as real quick a quick test run again i am basing my cabinet off of the simpsons pinball party so this is the only table i want to use to test and you can see real quick as far as like dmd i got the color dmd on this software on this is not easy it is very time consuming, but right now I am like legit ready to use this laptop as my test or really the PC inside the cabinet for now. And I could literally build the cabinet, get the TVs and such. The last step will be basically getting the PC. I'll be brutally honest, the PC, it's gonna be priced out to about 800 to $900. It's really because of the graphics card needed. You're talking 350 bucks alone in the graphics card. So. Enough of that, let me show you real quick the cool, awesome test bench on this. So uh, basically I have this set to flippers. So left flipper, right flipper, and then left slingshot. The slingshots are these, right? Every pinball table has a slingshot. So I have that solenoid set to the left. So I'm gonna start this table. And what's cool is that this table, when it starts, it actually fires off the flippers and you'll be able to see basically the flipper go off. So I'm gonna start this. And as you can see, it just fired off. So I could literally use the, the flippers. And as you can see, what I really like, that's why people do like these, um, this company for solenoids. As you can see, like I am literally firing this and there's no lag on it. So it's really great. And again, as far as we could play it, So that slingshot went off and it fired off that one. Again, color DMD. And again, basically that right there, it just fired off one. Like these would be another set of solenoids inside the cabinet. In the back, there's gonna be more solenoids. So again, it's gonna be insane how this is. Again, test bench on this. You can real quick see the same smart. So when it fires off from the LED whiz, you can literally see the LED turn off. So it's going from here to the same smart and then shooting out to the actual solenoid. So again, just a quick update on visual pinball, virtual pinball. It's awesome. So again, it's gonna fire off. So as you can see there, the 
flipper fires off. That's like what it does in real life. And it literally fires off the solenoid. So again, just a little quick update on this test bench. I got everything on this using three quarter inch plywood on this for the test bench. Everything is mounted. So I could literally put this against the wall, test it later on. But as far as the actual build, I'm gonna be using MDF uh, board on this. So MDF board, I think it's perfect for me to get into the wood game and also make my own cabinets. Um, as far as power supplies, I went big with the power supplies. You're looking at a 500 amp, 24 volt power supply because in all honesty, when the game is actually like going, you know, a lot of the solenoids will fire off. So, you know, I wouldn't worry about that power supply burning out or not having enough juice when let's say five solenoids pop off at the same time. So a lot of thought and Again, I'll do a price breakdown. You know, power supplies on eBay and on Amazon, they were about 15 bucks uh, to 25 bucks for the power supply. Solenoids, $5 each. LED Wiz was 45 bucks. The Sane Smart, I think, was at 35 or 40. And again, as far as power, this is all I need. If I did want to be neat, which I will buy, are the blocks, power blocks. Um, so basically, uh, I'll have basically a 24 volt block here and anything that needs 24 volts will go into the power block. Right now I have it going to the same smart. That's basically my power block right there. I want to do, I do want to keep it clean. I'm going to put power blocks and such. So basically a bunch of wires will go into a block. Um, this again was test purposes. As far as power, I literally have one outlet. And as you can see, I daisy chained power into the power supply. So inside the cabinet, I'm gonna be leaving the power supplies just like that, side by side, and then again, wiring it up correctly. There you guys have it. Virtual Pinball literally got the program running. That was again, another pain in the ass. I got color DMD. I got Dofflinks working on this. And right now in all honesty, the next step is waiting for the rest of the solenoids and possibly cutting some wood.